There is a term for people who are obese or have excess adiposity, but they really are metabolically healthy. And as a clinician, you wouldn't be as concerned about their health as somebody else who might even be leaner and not as overweight, but be metabolically unhealthy. The looks are deceiving. You could have two people who actually appeared the same, two people just moderately overweight and had some weight to lose, but you could observe them metabolically and see that, oh my gosh, this person metabolically is much more unhealthy than this person, even though they have the same appearance and the same amount of overweight. So it's not something that you can just see. It's not just having excess adiposity, it's having this condition of insulin resistance on top of the excess adiposity. And what it seemed was there was also some genetic predisposition to this. So in South Asian populations, in Latin American populations, in the Pima Indians, there were groups who were much more susceptible to this than others. And even though they looked relatively similar to other people carrying a little excess weight, they were metabolically in trouble, getting type two diabetes, having heart attacks. And so what was the cause of the insulin resistance? And this is definitely where Robert Lustig's work came in. He started tracking down glucose and fructose and sugar levels and what was happening over this time when this was being discovered, at least in the US and many other parts of the world, sugar intake was increasing. And I wanna specifically call this added sugars. So if you were eating fruit, you would get natural sugars. If you were eating vegetables, there's even natural sugars. Vegetables come with fiber in them and they're part of cells and it takes some time to access the sugar there. But if you have table sugar, maltose, dextrose, or concentrated fruit juice syrup, there's like 20 different names of the types of sugars that people add to some of the foods out there. Basically, they're all fructose and glucose. What seemed to be happening was that Americans were eating more of this, and as simple sugars, they get absorbed very rapidly in the body. And so when that happens, the idea was that the body's sensing, oh my God, you've eaten even more food than you really have. If you have that much glucose, there must be a lot more coming. We're gonna need a lot of insulin to handle this. Body started overproducing insulin, and there was so much sugar to put away the signal wasn't being listened to by your body. This constant influx of glucose spikes and insulin spikes kind of tired out your pancreas and tired out your body. Don't hesitate to pass on the knowledge and hit the subscribe button on our channel for more practical health insights.